old fellow gunners, Tim here in the garage. Hey, last time I loaded some 308, I had two. Now, what I like to do when I seat my bullets, I like the seating die to put a little crimp on there. I don't just let it hang and then crimp it later with a Lee factory crimping die. I actually don't have one from a 308 because I've never had an issue with just using the crimping portion of my seating die. I, uh, but <laughs> the last time I loaded some, I had two that I guess the shoulders kind of crushed a little bit. I couldn't get them to the chamber. I, uh, so what I'm going to do from now on is I thought they were close. Close enough not to trim, so I didn't trim them. I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to trim every one of them. That way they're uniform and I don't have to worry about it. And then I just go right on. Now, I know a lot of you know how to trim. There might be a few out there that don't. I use the Lee trimming system. Got a little... Got your cutter and your depth gauge. And then I chuck, chuck the uh, shell holder in a uh, drill. And you just put your depth gauge in depth gauge in there with your cutter. And you just get it. Can you see the little yeah pieces of brass that it trimmed off? That's the way I like to trim it. Now, I didn't bring out my uh, deburring tool. I left it in the, by the bench, but you, you know, it leaves burrs when it cuts it, so you just take it off with the deburring tool. All right, uh, I'm gonna be loading up these 308s for uh, hunting season. We'll load up some to side in and make sure that's the load I want to use. I'm going to be using uh, 41.6 grains of uh, AR comp behind that uh, 165 grain SST Hornady. We'll get into more of that when I get to the bench. All right, guys, I'm back at the bench. Doing my trimming. I'm going to check them real quick. Two zero 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 seven. I guess that's two point zero zero seven double oh seven. Okay. Now normally when you trim it's uh the maximum is uh two point zero fifteen is your max case length. You're supposed to trim, trim down to uh, 2.005. But now, for some reason, this trimming gauge I've got goes down to 7 instead of 5. Which is okay with me. It's, you know. Got another one here. One good thing about that lead trimming thing, you just, it's set, you just go. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to measure them before or after. You just go measuring it just to make sure. I've got two deburring tools that I use. I got this one sold by RCBS, but it's made by Wilson. And I also have the little Lee, I actually like the Lee deburring tool better 
it, it's got two cutting surfaces and it seems to cut smoother. See that? There we go. There's the inside. There's for the outside. A little fill check here. Yep. Feels good. Now, here we go with the uh, RCDS. And I want to warn you if you're wearing earphones, this could be kind of a bad sound for you. outside and the inside Fill it real quick that feels good I don't know why that deburring tool makes that weird awkward bird call sound <laughs> but there it is it does kind of irritating all right guys I'm gonna do that and then I'll come back with another stage yeah, I do have a question for you guys I've been using the Lyman die set. I don't use Lyman very often. Uh, my first 41 die was a Lyman, and it didn't last very long. It was steel. It wasn't carbide. It didn't last very long. It, of course, you know, your rifle is... Just steel and you have to lubricate it. And I've always lubricated my stuff. And has anybody ever noticed that the steel is soft and after a while it starts scratching your brass? I, I also have one in a 45 ACP. And now it's carbide, but it's, it's starting to scratch my brass. Starting not really like Lyman. I normally use RCBS, but I got it on sale. I'm pretty sure that's why I bought it. That might be why. That's a question. If anybody uses Lyman or had an experience with Lyman, I'd like to know. Leave a comment down below. All right, guys. thought I'd show you how to clean these... Uh, primer pockets, but I already cleaned them, forgot I'd done it, but anyway, I've got the Lee little primer, primer pocket cleaner, and you just stick it in there and turn it, and all the crud that's in there comes out, all right, I'm going to prime it, I use the RCBS hand priming tool, I'm going to be using CCI large pistol primers, 200s. I have yet to see the reason to use a Magnum yet. But I don't shoot Magnum calipers either. That might be why. Now this little tray is kind of cool. See how they're this way and that way and you want to have all of them on their bottoms? What I call bottoms. You just roll, you just kind of shake it back and forth, and there's little ridges in here that flips them primers over. There we go. Got a little lid, you just stick it on there. And there's a uh, place here that closes your little spout that goes into your, or your feeding ramp, whatever you want to call it. It goes into your uh, hand primer. You just shake them till they go down that little feeding ramp. You just take your casing stick, and this is a just a regular shell holder. It's not one of them universal ones where you slide in there. It's got little springs that hold your shell holder. It's just a regular shell holder. This system to me is I have found is what works best for me. There's a lot of guys that have uh, primer seeders that are bench mount. Some of them use their 
single presses to uh, seat their primers. Some guys have the automatic ones on their uh, progressives. There's several different ways to seat your primers, but this, this system here has always worked the best for me in my application. Now, I'm just a single stage kind of guy. I do everything old school around here. <laughs> I don't know if that's good or bad. It's just something I'm used to. That's why I do what I do. All right, guys, I'm going to prime these, and I'll be back. All right, guys, we got them primed. We got them trimmed. I thought this was mixed brass, but it's not. It's all uh, Remington. So we're good to go on that. We've got 20 casings out here. Uh, hopefully it won't take more than 20 casings to get my rifle side down. I'm a little light, so we're going to adjust the uh, powder measure some more. And what I'm adjusting, I'll put in my trickler. Just fill that up so we can trickle in the rest of what we need. Hang on just a second. All right, guys, we're back at it. All right, we're this measures out at uh, forty-one point two, and we're going to go with forty-one point six. A good old AR comp. We're going to be using the uh, 4D 165 grain SSTs. Since I've started hunting with this bullet, I have not had to track a deer at all. Uh, I know there's more accurate bullets on the market, but this thing is just devastating to deer. Let's get our charge up. guys we got a casing here I haven't expanded the neck any these bullets are boat tails they should be able to feed in pretty good there we go that one's ready for seating light on that one. There we 
go. Alright guys, I'm going to do this 18 more times, then we'll come back and we'll seat these bullets, find us a good depth, bullet height, depth, to me that's confusing sometimes because when you're seating it, you know, you're pushing it down to a depth, but then when you're measuring it, it's a height, <laughs> okay guys, I'll be back. All right, guys, we're going to seat these bullets. I've got all 20 of them ready. I think I already have this adjusted, but we'll creep up on it in case I don't. I must have uh, done some cast bullets last. So that ain't going down far enough, not yet. What I'm doing is I'm taking it right to the cantaloupe. I'm hitting a little bit of crimp. I'm going to bring my seating stem down to match my bullet because I've set my bullet and now I've set my crimp. up real quick and then I'll give it a good measure. seven four three and there's a five on the end so see where the next one sets then maybe have an average So that one's uh, 2.742. Okay. If I 
a little stiff trying to seek that bullet. Well, this one feels that way too. Wow. First one didn't feel that stiff. Well, they're looking pretty good though. Look like that's crimping a little heavier than I want it to. Guess I need to measure it, don't I? That's back up to the 3.744 again. Okay. So we're going to be somewhere between 2.742 and 2.744. I zeroed my calipers out just in case I didn't zero them out to start with. All right, well, now we're up to uh, 2.745. The one that measured 2.742 is now 4.4. Okay, so we had a little problem there with uh, zero jumped off. All right, now we're now we're more consistent. I went through and remeasured these. Now we're right at 2.7454. So we're doing good. I'll tell you something else with these polymer tip bullets. Sometimes that tip may be a little damaged or flattened more than another one. So you got to remember that. All right, guys. I'm going to seat the rest of these. And next time I'll see you, I'll see you at the range. All right, guys, I'm at the range. I'll shoot the uh, <clears throat> Remington 722 380 wind, or 308 Winchester. Got the 165-grain SSTs. 41.6 grains of uh, AR comp. Got 20 rounds. I'm going to side it in. Now, you know, last time I shot this gun, I had a temporary bedding system. Well, I've since put some shallow pillows, pillars in and got it permanent. So, let's see what we can do. Right, so we're shooting a little high and uh, to the right. I think it just woke the neighbors up. Should have took my caps off earlier. All right, so we need to go down. Let's see, well, we need to go down. Actually, I think my height's pretty good because I want to shoot about an inch and a quarter. That way, at 100 yards, I'm an inch and a quarter high, but at 300 yards, I'm pretty close to being dead on. So we're going to leave our heights there. Uh, we're going to move uh, three inches to the uh, right.
There we go. So we just moved it three inches to the right. Dead center. I think I'm going to take it down a quarter of an inch though. We're close enough to shoot a group now. Oh, that sucker's kicking. Alright guys, I'm going to shoot one more time, then I'm going to call it quits. That's, that's actually starting to hurt. That's rough on no man. That's enough for me. I'll wait a minute. I've got some kind of something my son had. It's steel case. It says HMC on it. I have no idea what it is. I'm going to shoot one of them and see what happens. All right, guys, I'll catch you back at the bench. All right, guys, we're back at the bench. Uh, shooting a 308 Remington 722. Just got one target to look at, and there it is. This was my very first shot of the coal barrel clean. Now, I shot again. See, I, I didn't mess with the elevation, just the windage. I brought it over, it shot dead center. This was my second shot. And you'll, if you'll remember in the video, me at the range, I said I'm going to lower it a quarter. It come down to here. Then after that, I, I don't know what happened. It coming over here, 
But, uh, not to bring up any excuses or anything, but the sun was hitting my glass just right to where it just kind of flared. And one of these is that steel uh, case ammunition I was shooting. I think it was Hornady steel. Why didn't he make steel? Yeah. Anyway. But this group here, me adjusting it back and forth and all that. Actually, I didn't adjust it, did I? Oh, I didn't. After I adjusted it from here to here, I didn't adjust it. So this group is um, the extreme spread from here to here, three and a quarter inches. So why it spread out after the first two shots after the adjustment, I don't know. There it is, guys. I, I believe I'm ready for deer season. We might. I'm going to stick with this load. Excuse me. I'm going to stick with this load. And uh, shoot it a time or two, cold, and not rush it. So, thanks guys for watching. Remember to share, like, subscribe. I'll catch you in the next video.